Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over error handling in Node.js and just some best practices for what kinds of errors you should be handling, how to best handle them, and I'll also show you how to create your own custom errors. So before we get into the code, I want to go over the different types of errors that can occur. So the first type is a programmer error. And this happens when there are mistakes in the logic or the syntax of the code, and they're also referred to as bugs. And they could be fixed by just editing the source code. So some examples could be trying to access a property of an undefined variable. So these are unexpected errors that uh, you're not accounting for. And the next type is operational errors. And these are errors that are anticipated and accounted for. So they're expected. And so this happens when an operation has the potential to fail. And we handle those errors by determining what should happen if it fails. So in this case, you're thinking ahead and you know that something could go wrong. And now it's just a matter of how should you handle it when it goes wrong. So some examples could be uh, when a user is not found or they're not authorized. And these errors are usually sent back to the client. So now that we have those, let's go back into the code. So I just have a super basic express app here, which has one route defined, and that's a get request to slash test. And all it does right now is return this success response. Well, let's come up here and I'm going to show you what an example of a programmer error would be. So we could do something like const name equals user dot name. And you can see here that user is not defined. Um, so obviously it's not going to have a name property. So if we go to postman and we try to hit the endpoint, you'll see that the request hangs here. And if you look at the console here, you'll see that this was the error, users not defined. So this would be a programmer error. And I'm not gonna account for these in this video uh, because those are errors that you just wanna always avoid. You never wanna handle those kind of errors. So from here on out, we're just gonna be dealing with operational errors. So I wanna create a function that's gonna mimic a database call. So we'll call it get user, and it's just gonna return undefined. So we can come up here in our controller and say const user equals get user. And then as I mentioned before, operational errors are ones that you wanna anticipate and handle if they go wrong. So we could check if there's no user, then we're gonna to wanna to throw an error. So we'll say throw, and then we're gonna create an error instance. And then the message will be user not found. So now we're checking and we know that the user could potentially be undefined if the client passes a user ID that's not valid or is not of a user in the system. And if that's the case, then we want to just throw an error. So let's see what happens when we send a request and you could see that it still hangs. And if you look in the logs, you'll be able to see that error here, user not found. And you also see that there's an unhandled promise rejection. And what that basically means is that we were in this async function and an error was thrown or a promise was rejected, uh, but it was never caught and therefore never handled. And so when you throw an error like this, JavaScript will go through the call stack and keep going up and up until the error is caught and handled somewhere. And if it's never caught or handled, then it'll just crash or throw an error. The way to get around this is by wrapping everything in a try catch block. So if we come down here and we just place all of our logic that could potentially go wrong, it's usually asynchronous calls or database calls, and we put all of that in the try block here so that when an error occurs or when one of the promises rejects, it could be caught in this catch block. So we could log the error here, and in here, we want to return the response. So let's call res.status, and we'll give it a 400 for a bad request, and we'll just send back the error message. So we could do error.message. So now all of our asynchronous code that could potentially go wrong is wrapped in this try catch block, and so we'll catch the error and send it back to the client. So when we send it, we could see that message and the error is still being logged here to the console. Now, if we wanted to create another endpoint, we would basically just have to take this route and just paste it down below and then maybe modify the verb and give it a new path. And then again, you're gonna have your controller and you have to wrap all your logic in a try block. And then in your catch block, you get the error and do all of your error handling in here. But as you can see, this gets very repetitive and it can also get super clunky if you have a lot of logic in here. And then when you catch the error, say you wanna do extra processing to an error. Maybe you wanna hit some sort of external service or send an email based on a specific error um, or 
any sort of extra processing, you wouldn't want to do that all in this catch block that's in the controller. So instead, we'd want to create error handler middleware that would just come at the end of all of our routes that we defined so that if an error is thrown in one of these routes, Express will then look at the next middleware and keep going down the list until it hits our error handler. And that error handler will take care of processing the error and then sending back the response. So we don't have to keep calling res.send for all the error responses. So first, let's begin by creating that error handler middleware. So we could create a directory called middleware and in here, we'll create a file called error handler. So let's create our error handler middleware. So we could say const error handler is equal to a function that takes in the normal middleware parameters. So request, response, and next. And in order to tell Express that this is specifically error handling middleware, we need to pass four parameters instead of three. So now, anytime that in our controllers or in our other pieces of middleware, when we call next and we pass in a parameter, That'll tell Express that that's an error that we want to pass on, and we'll get access to that error through this first parameter. So in here is where we actually want to process the error and return the response. So let's go back to our app and just paste this, or copy and, and paste this in here. And we're going to be getting the error that was thrown through this parameter, and then we just want to call the res object to return that response. So now let's just export this, and then come back in our app and use it. So instead of handling and doing all the error logic in this catch block, we wanna just call next. And remember that controllers are just middleware. And if that doesn't make sense, then watch my previous video on node middleware or express middleware. And I go into more depth on that. So if that doesn't make sense, watch that video and come back. So we can call the next function to tell express to go on to the next piece of middleware. And let's just pass in that error. And we also want to return out of here so that it doesn't go on and try to send the response here. So now if we hit save, you can see that all of our error handling logic is out of the catch block and we're calling next, which will then tell Express to go down to the next piece of middleware. And we actually have to define that here. So we'll call app.use and then we want to pass in our error handler. So now Express will then go into this middleware and go through the error handler, pass that in here, and we'll be sending back the response. So now if we go to Postman, we should see the request comes back and we get that error message and there's nothing logged in the console. So it's all working properly. So now you can see we just took out a lot of code. So at least in, in the catch block, um, but we were using fairly simple examples, but once your error handling logic gets pretty complex, you don't want to have it all in your controller. Now we could clean up this code even more and we could do that by creating an abstraction around this try catch logic. So let's start by creating that abstraction. So we'll create a folder called the utils, and then in here, we'll just call it try catch. And this is gonna be a function. So we could do exports.tryCatch. It's gonna be equal to a function and it's gonna take another function as a parameter and we'll call that the controller. So this parameter will be the controller that we wanna run. And this is gonna return another function and it's actually gonna return an async function. And the parameters for that function will be the express controller parameters. So request, response, and the next function. Now in here, we wanna run the tryCatch logic. So we'll put everything that our controller has, all the logic in that function in here, and we're gonna try to await that whole function. And we're gonna pass in the request and response objects from Express. And then if anything goes wrong in the controller, that error is gonna be thrown and it'll be caught in here. And now in here, we just wanna return out and call the next function, passing in the error. So if I just split this pane and go back to the app, it'll probably make it a little bit easier to see what's actually going on. So now instead of having our controller like this, where it's this async function here that runs all of our logic, we want to call the try catch function. And then as a parameter, we want to pass in a controller. So that'll be this async function that we defined. So now we get rid of that and just pass it in to the try catch as a parameter. So now we try to run this function here, and that's really just going to be running whatever we passed in. So now in here, we could get rid of the, the try catch block. And now we're just left with this function and it's slimmed down a lot more and we actually don't even need this next call. We don't need that parameter. So now all this function is, it just tries to get the user. If there's no user, it just throws the error and that error will then be caught in here, passed on to the next function. And then Express will go down the, the pieces of middleware and then it'll finally hit the error handler 
and again is is passed in through here and we send back the response so we just abstracted away a lot more code and it still works just as it did before. So if we go back into Postman, we hit send, we see user not found and everything's working properly. So I hope that made sense to you guys. Now let's add some extra logic that will deal with specific kinds of operational errors like uh, request validation errors. So let's come down here and we'll just get rid of this old controller and we're going to use our try catch abstraction. And in here, we're going to put our controller. And now in this endpoint, we want to do some request validation. And we're going to be using Joy in this example. And I'm not going to go over exactly how to use that library. I already made a video in the past about it. So I'll link that in the description as well. But we're going to create a schema here. Let's import Joy. And it's going to be an object. And then the object is just going to have a user ID on it. And we want that to be a number. And we want it to be required. So now, our request has to match an object with a user ID on it. So in here, we can call the validate method on the schema, and that tries to validate whatever value you pass in here against this schema. So let's just pass in uh, an empty object. This validate method returns an object with two properties on it, and those are error and value. If the validation was successful, then we would get that value in the value prop. Otherwise, it'll pass in a specific joy error and it would be a validation error. So we want to check if there was an error. And if there was an error, we want to throw it. So now when this schema fails to validate, we'll catch that error here and we're going to throw that error and then it'll come down to our handler. We'll get that error here and I just want to log that to the console. So let's go back in here and we want to do a post request to slash login. And when we hit send, you'll see user ID is required and you'll see the error is logged here. And you could see that it's of type or the, the name is validation error. And then there's some other properties like this details array. And this will be an array of all the error messages that we potentially want to display to the user. So now in our error handler, let's say we want to specifically handle uh, validation errors. So we could come in here and do a check. So we could say if error dot uh, name is equal to this value here, then we wanna run some custom logic here. And what we wanna do is instead of just returning the message, we wanna return still a 400, but instead we wanna return an object with, um, let's say we could put the type in there. So type equals validation error. And now this could be a key for the front end that whenever it gets this type, it could display an array of details. And we also wanna pass in those details. So we could do error dot details. So now when the error name is validation error, we're sending back this response with these properties. But if it's not a validation error, it'll come down and send this generic 400 with the error message. So now when we go back to Postman, we hit send, you'll see that we actually get back that custom error response. In this way, we're able to send and handle different kinds of errors based on the type of error coming in. And you could see that you would not wanna do all of this logic in your actual controllers as we did before. Now, the last thing I wanna do is show you guys how you can create your own custom errors. So let's create a file called app error. And in here, we'll define a class called app error, and it's gonna extend the base error class. And now in here, we're gonna have a constructor and it's gonna take in some parameters. So the first one will be the error code, and then the message, and lastly, the status code. And now, every time we wanna throw an app error, we have to pass in these three things. And we're gonna run the super method, and that's gonna just basically take our message and uh, run the base error constructor with that message. And then we want to set the custom properties. So this dot error code equals error code. And then we also want to do that for the status code. Okay. So every time we create an instance of the app error, it'll have these custom properties. Now we can come back in our app and we'll just comment out this check here. And let's create another function that will get a subscription. And now we'll use this function down here. And this is gonna be undefined. So we're, we're gonna do another check. If subscription is not defined, we wanna throw an app error um, because this is an error that we specifically wanna handle within our, our business logic. And in our app error, we need to pass in three parameters, the error code, the message, and the status code. 
For the error code, let's say we have a constants file with a bunch of different errors that we specifically decide we want to handle, like invalid subscription or account locked or any sort of errors that we decide. And this is all internal. They're just going to be these numbers. So we could just say invalid subscription. We could pass that in as the error code and let's import that. And then the message will just be, I don't know, subscription not found. And then we also want to pass the status code. So we'll just say 400 bad requests. So now instead of just throwing a normal base error like we did here, we're throwing an app error with those custom properties and the specific error code. So now we can come in our handler and we could check for that app error. So we could do if error is an instance of, and we wanna get our app error, then we wanna do some custom logic here. If that's the case, then we just want to return a response with the status being the error dot status code. And then in the response body, we want to return that error code. So we'll just say error dot error code. So for validation errors, obviously it's not going to have the error code, but for the app errors, it will have these properties because every time that we throw an app error, we have to pass in these parameters. So now we know in our error handler that every time it's an app error, it's something went wrong within our business logic. If the error didn't fulfill any of these uh, conditions, if it wasn't a validation error and it wasn't an app error, then it's some random error that we don't actually know what happened. So we're just going to return a 500 and a message saying something went wrong. In this case, this could be something like uh, the database went down or, or some error that was not expected and something that's not really being handled. So now we can come back to Postman and let's hit this post endpoint again. And app error is not defined, so we have to import it somewhere. So we actually have to export it first and come back and import it in all these areas. And we actually have to call new before instantiating the app error class. So that was my bad. Now, if we go back to Postman, now we should see the error code. And you can see that on the front end, this error code means nothing because it's just 300. But now we can know um, that since it was a 300, we could look back at our error codes and see that 300 was an invalid subscription. So we can know uh, what kind of error specifically it was internally without the user ever really knowing on the front end. So this is how we can handle different kinds of errors. And you may want to break up these functions into their own files if the business logic gets even more complex with custom errors. But this is uh, the basics of it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and you found this helpful. If you, if you did, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>